Portrait Artist of the Year, Season 5, Episode 8, and I'm going to include some new features. I'll tell you what they are in a second. Let's get started. All right, first, we'll take a look at the participants, but before we do that, I want to say that I am going to be showing all the self-portraits that the participants do in order to be on the program. And I haven't done that in my recaps before, but that'll give us a better idea of their body of work. So here's the first one up. I'm not going to comment on these very much. It just allows us to see a better idea of who the field is. I think that, um, you know, I certainly, <laughs> this one, just remember this shirt for a second. He's wearing that shirt here. He wears the shirt in his self-portrait and Gosh darn it, he wears the, I'm just teasing, but he wears the shirt for the competition as well. Must be the lucky shirt. Here's one I, that I really enjoy because of how um, fractured it is and also, you know, new ways to do a self-portrait. We've all seen self-portraits. I'm always looking a little bit for concepts as well. Not, I don't know if that's a criterion in this program, but, you know, the, right here, look at that. Interesting concept, right? Something I certainly wouldn't have thought of doing. But I think that gives you an idea of their creative range to some degree. So, so I enjoy being able to see them. Here's the next one coming up. Uh, take note. We will, we will be seeing this one later. It's a very interesting self-portrait because of the angle that he used, which is as if you're looking down into your cell phone, I guess. Just an unusual, un unusual choice, I, 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 which I appreciate. It also gives you an idea of how they, how an artist might perceive themselves or how they want to per be perceived in the world. And I enjoy that. And so I'm going to be continuing to put this small segment in. It does make the video longer, and I apologize for that. If you don't want to see this, you know, just, just skip ahead. All right, so the first participant is Jody Cormer, and she is an actress. And... Um, as usual, we have a beautiful face to work with. Uh, she has a very long list of credentials in television and in movies, even though she's surprisingly young. So four hours into the competition, and remember there's six artists competing, uh, but each, so three, three people each in each segment. So three artists turn their easels around after four hours and she and we get to see the first look at what they've been working on. And she picks one of these to go home, but we don't know which one. Now the first one up, I absolutely adore this kind of painting. I, this is the kind of painting that I strive to do, using color value relationships to establish planes in a face and putting them, those kinds of value shifts and changes near each other can create form. Now what's missing here, that I like is blending, but I like to see that pure color. I like it when my brain will arrange the image and, and the artist hasn't uh, sort of done all the work for me and there's a freshness to the color because there hasn't been blending. Those pigments put near each other are enough to turn the form. So I really like this one and, and I also think it reads very well. We like to pull back and, and have a look of what it might, might look like on a gallery wall. The final commission for the person who wins this year, the, the year five, season five, is a portrait of Tom Jones. And it looks like this person can certainly handle that assignment. So nicely done. Now we go on to the next one. It's a very, very different type of painting. You know, here, here there's a lot of blending going on. It's also very beautiful and very fresh. And I think she's, cap you know, there's, there's a, certainly a capture of, oh, I don't know, like a winsome kind of look on her face, which I like. I, I don't want just a, a jet, um, what do you call it, not just a representation, but, you know, who is this person? What, you know, what, what vibe do you kind of get from this person? Now, from far away, it's a much smaller painting than I thought it was as was her self-portrait if we went back to the beginning and saw. So this is a size she's comfortable working in, which uh, I, I agree, I like a smaller size. Here again, extremely different way of painting. This is much more 
le less based on shape and more based on again on on blending and I, I you know when you pull back I, I just don't think it's as effective in terms of painting as the ones that we saw so far especially that first one which almost looked like, like he had carved the forms out with paint now Jody's going to pick one to take home and that has nothing to do with the final judging but it's an honor and so she picks this one I would have picked this one too I'd love to have this in my home I could look at this endlessly and I can see that uh, there are just spots of color that just make all the difference. Just using flesh tones in a face kind of isn't going to get the job done. There needs to be some other colors that are in the environment around the form. All right, Nick Moran is the next one up. And Nick is an actor and a filmmaker. He was in Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels, which sounds familiar to me, but I, I don't remember it. <laughs> So I must not have seen it. Now his background is all these crazy like amoeba kind of shapes. I don't, I don't remember if the artists deal with that at all. They Sometimes they deal with the background, sometimes they ignore it. And I have no idea why the judges decide on the background that they do for each participant. Four hours in, the artists turn their easels around and this looks very promising. And let's see what happens. So here's the first one up. This is this is something that I really can't comment on very much. I, I am not familiar with this type of painting, which is um, doesn't have a lot. You, you can't really see the architecture of the paint underneath. It's just all very, very blended. So it's beautiful, but I don't really know how to comment on it. And from far away, also very beautiful. Hmm. Especially like what she kind of did with the shoulders in the background. It, I, I, you know, I really look for continuity. I want to see those purples and blues in, in reflected in the clothing and also in the face. And she did that, so good job on that. She's kind of a colorist, actually, but, but because of all the blending, it's hard to tell. Uh, this one is less interesting to me. I know it has a muted palette, and I do like a muted palette, but something about this one gets it's bordering on a little bit chalky, so I'm not sure how to respond to this. It's certainly not as strong as, as that first one that we saw. Let's take a look. Oh, here he is, yeah, wearing his lucky shirt. Good for him. Um, I, oh, I like the painting much better from further away. You get a better sense of how relaxed the sitter was, so that's a nice job. It would have been nice to have some brighter tones in that very back as well. Oh, that's a beautiful painting really nicely done. Here's a good example of where you where you blend, you don't fragment to the extent that we saw earlier and there's enough blending but you can also see color spots of value in there as well and so that's a that's a good sort of uh, integration of the two different styles of painting but it's, it's a beautiful painting. Um, now let's take a look at it from far away and see how it might read in a gallery. Oh, it's not as strong from far away. Maybe because he didn't have time that he needed to, to get things established below. Boy, I'm not sure. Boy, I squint my eyes and I'm not, oh, I really loved it close up. It's a little different far away. All right, Nick's pick. He picks one to take home. And which one does he pick? He picks this one. Well, great. Oh, I like it cropped that way. That That's the solution. Crop it so that that bottom part isn't there. That would be helpful. Yeah, see, if, I, if it's cropped to about there, it's a much stronger painting. All right, on to the next up is Daniel Lismore, a sculptor and a fabric artist. And the way that Daniel expresses his art is in the clothing that Daniel wears. So this is a very unusual subject because of the clothing. Now I needed to go on the internet and have a look at what he was about, what what it was all about. I have to be really careful with the pronouns here because I don't know the pronouns that are correct for Daniel. So I'm, I'm doing my best. But this would have been a real surprise to me if this had come up as one of the models. I'm, there's a lot. There is a lot to consider there. 
and I find it pretty overwhelming. Here is one of the participants' reaction when Daniel came in. So that reflects that this is going to be really, really tough. But four hours in, easels get turned around, and we get to have a look at how they tackled this extremely complex figure with textures and colors, and it's just kind of mind-blowing. So hats off to the people who, who had this as, as what they needed to paint. All right, here's the first one up. Oh boy, well, yeah, no, this is this is just fine in my opinion. I really don't have a lot to say about it. There would have been so much to consider. It would have been so overwhelming. And here's the artist and the model looking at the same time at the painting. It's strong. It's fine. I don't have really a lot to say about it. The next one is very different in terms of the application of paint, which is not put on with a great bit of generosity, but but a great deal of texture. And the fragmented faces on the left, I really enjoy. I, I wonder if it reflected a bit of the struggle when it came to the editing of what was in front of all of the artists, because it would have been really, really tough. But they, you know, you, you have to deal with the hand that you are dealt. And if you're a good painter, anything can be painted. It really doesn't matter what it is. However, the complexity of this, I really have to respond to and say, that would have been really darn tough. And here it is from far away. Beautiful job. And now we go on to the last participant for this particular heat. This is a much stronger painting in terms of paint application. That's pretty direct, pretty, pretty broad. Um, much, much more paint being applied and in a more, I don't want to say aggressive, it's not aggressive, but it's, uh, it's not, it's, it's confident and yeah, I don't have a lot to say about it. I, it just, this just would have been so incredibly overwhelming in terms of being able to decide which parts to concentrate on and, and which parts to to edit out. So I think they all did a great job from far away. Yeah, that, that reads really well and will work very well on a gallery wall as well. So that might be a consideration for the judges, but not for Daniel. He gets to pick one to take home. And I, I suspect that he's gonna pick a very strong one because uh, he's not afraid of color and not afraid of texture, that's for sure. So let's take a look. Yeah, that's the one he picked. I'm not surprised. Makes a lot of sense. So good for her. That was that was really tough. I mean, if it was tough for me to talk about, <laughs> just imagine how tough it was for them to paint. So now we go on to the final judging. The judging begins and all six artists are lined up after an exhausting, exhausting day and only three will be chosen for the final judging of this episode, which is episode eight. And that should be the last regular episode. The next one, I think we start to, I think the next one's the finals. All right, here we go. Um, yeah, I, this is where we started the video. I absolutely adore this painting. I just, just do because it's, I guess because it's my style, what I strive to in my style with color spots of value, with value shapes being established, and where there's, the paint is allowed to do the work as opposed to the brush. And there's a lot of beautiful gestural work being done on the collar and on the hair. So that's, that's oh gosh, this is a beautiful one too. Oh my gosh, I'm so glad I'm not a judge. This would be absolutely impossible to judge. I would have to move these two people forward. How, how can you not? Beautiful, beautiful job. But, oh, and I should also say, this particular episode, I did not watch the entire thing with this. I watched it with the sound off, is what I'm trying to say. Because usually I listen to what the judges have to say, and this time I thought, no, I don't want to hear anything they have to say. And so I don't know what their thoughts were when they were comparing these pieces. 
I may go back and listen, but I kind of doubt it. Oh, and this is the third one. Oh, that's a surprise. Um, that is not as strong as the other two for me. Uh, again, I don't know what their criterion was. And now my favorite part of the program is when they show both the self-portrait and the work that they did in the four hours today because it lets you get an idea of what the artist can do when they have unlimited time as compared to what they're, they have to do under the time constraints of four hours, camera lights on you, people milling around and, and talking. I mean, it would have... I, hats off to all of them that they can do this at all. The, I think there's a very big difference between the portrait that he got to spend a lot of time with and the one that he did today. So, um, so that's noted. Now let's take a look at the next one. Yeah, this was the one that had a very interesting perspective from the very beginning when it came to the self-portrait where it's just an unusual angle. I don't see a lot of difference between the two, perhaps a little bit more blending in the one that he had more time for, but I, I mm, yeah, okay, there's a difference, but, um, so he probably, he probably would have kept, he probably would have kept modeling a bit with his brush rather than leave things the way I like them established as, as paint swabs. Oh, interesting, see the, the very unusual portrait on the left and the one that he did today. Wow, that's just beautiful. I don't know what the judges are going to do. It's it's really, really tough. I would have to advance two of these people. There's no way that I could, that I could, that I could not. So final judging. In the final judging, let's take one last look at the three people who were chosen for the finals today, but only one will go through and go on to the real finals, and there will be eight participants in the fi in the real finals because we've had eight episodes so far and from that they'll pick three semifinalists and from that there will be one winner the winner is for today dun, 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 this one well of course you know this pleases me because i like this one from the very beginning so remember to keep the whites of your paper white your paint wet mass for value mix for color and i will see you next time and if you would give me a thumbs up or join my YouTube channel, that would be fantastic. And we go on to what start to be the finale of this program. See you next time. Bye-bye.